Hello everybody, this is Vertical Sandwich and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy VIII. And these are the three basic enemies outside of Trivia Garden. These bug looking things over on the left are the same basic enemy that we had right outside of the Lom Garden when we started the game. So we don't need anything from them. They can die. The unicorn looking things and the manta ray looking things are pretty important at this point in the game. Because the unicorns can produce life rings, which are fine into the, the spell life. We can mug mesmerize blades from them, which uh, one of them turns... See, we just got six of them. Which one of them turns into 20 of the spell regen. And the manta rays, we can mug uh, mystery fluid, which gives Quistus the limit break acid attack and refines into 10 of the spell Meltdown. Mystery Fluid, okay. Yeah. Um, so, we're gonna be doing a little of that, uh, not on camera. I just wanted to show you the enemies and kind of run through exactly what you can get from them. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna advance the plot line kind of through one video. And then off camera, I'll come back and do all of this, and then go back to where we leave in this video. Because we're actually going somewhere else in this video. So I'll come back and do all that, and then have it at the start of the next video. So everybody followed me here? It's kind of convoluted. I mean, it's not as convoluted as the last video where we talked about, like, the whole childhood and how everybody knew each other but had forgotten, and, like, was raised by the sorceress who we're now going to try to kill. Like, it's not that convoluted. I'm just going to go, and then come back when you're not looking, and then go back and pretend it never happened. Okay, life ring turns into 20 lives, mesmeroid blades, 20 regen. And I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna go through and show you that these things actually turn into the things that I say that they're going to. Not that you shouldn't believe me, I know what I'm talking about, sometimes. Uh, and, then, I'm gonna show you how they kind of affect our junctioning, we're going to go back into Trabia Garden, we're going to get the selfie card, and then we're going to go to the Central Ruins and get the Odin GF, which isn't really a GF, but we're not splitting hairs. Well, maybe we are. Maybe you are, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying to play a game, people, leave me alone. See, Mystery Fluid, Meltdown, 10 apiece. And like I said, you should use one to give Quistus the Acid Limit Break. I already did that, so I won't be showing that, unfortunately. So now, obviously, we can, if we auto-junction here, yeah, look, it, like, jumped up her hit points, like, 2,000. That's awesome. We want to do more of that. Okay, something's wrong there, because hers definitely should have jumped up. Well, she doesn't have a hundred regen, so that's why. That makes perfect sense. So we'll have to exchange some of her magic with somebody else. I know this is kind of a pain. I try not to show too much of this, but we got to show some of it so you get the feeling for kind of how the game works. Um, and actually, after I grind for these items and kind of put them in place, then the last set of grinding we'll be doing will be in disc three. Well, I take that back. There, there might be some grinding in Disc 4. We'll talk about grinding in Disc 4, regardless. Because how you get around the world in Disc 4 is like a whole video all on itself. Because the world completely changes. You lose X to all the towns for Disc 4. But, uh, there will be some grinding in Disc 3 to get higher level spells, like Ultima, Triple, uh, Aura, and... Possibly full life? Um, I'm not sure. We'll see when we get there. And we will eventually get there. The problem with the way we're playing the game is that we're moving the plot around, plot along really quickly, and not doing a lot of stuff in between. Where normally you would be running around, fighting monsters, and kind of leveling up, and gaining, you know, and getting stronger. We're not doing a lot of that, because we know exactly where to go and what to do. In most cases. So I've got to supplement by doing these kind of off-screen things to get us stronger, so. 
At some point, I may actually have to grind for GF abilities and to get actual physical levels on my characters, uh, which will be weird, but but I'll do it if I have to. I promise you that. But we'll, we'll have a video where we talk about the island closest to hell, which has a lot to do with that stuff. And we'll also have a Jumbo Cactar video, which we'll talk about Cactar Island. And that will cover grinding for GF abilities. So, um, we'll get to where we're going, I mean, eventually. That is my promise to you. Okay, so this is Selfie's friend. She was having the conversation with Selfie, and she does the thing where she says you don't... And if you don't want rules to spread, you have to say no repeatedly. We're going to skip all that and go straight to playing cards with her. And Travia's rules give you random cards. You don't get to select what card to use. So at this point, it helps if you ground for all the cards that we ground for, because you want to have a few high-powerful cards. Because you're going to get some real crap in your random hand. I suppose you could, like, card mod all the lower level cards to increase your odds of getting good cards. And that probably wouldn't kill you. I actually should take my own advice and do that, but... But I won't. Because, I don't know, I'm an idiot. You gotta know that I'm an idiot, and just... I don't know, I don't tend to believe my own advice when my ideas are original ideas. I'll follow a walkthrough. I'll follow a walkthrough straight through the gates of hell, but like, when I have an idea, I just won't. I don't know. You should try it. I don't know. We're gonna have a whole other card things going on. This is, but it... Luckily, there are not a lot more, kind of... There aren't gonna be, like, that video where I just got, like four rare cards or whatever, and it took me forever. Uh, th that's not going to happen anymore. We're going to have one every once in a while. Until we get to the... Uh, until we get to the lunar base. There's two there. And they're going to be a pain. And they're really cool ones. They're like... Uh, are they a Laguna and Ward? They might be Laguna and Ward. Because there's a Laguna and Ward in the Curious card. The only... I, I think I mentioned this, that two player cards that we're not going to get, maybe I didn't, um, are uh, Kiros and Irvine, because you have to get those from the Queen of Cards quest, and I'll talk about that probably at some point, the Queen of Cards quest, we won't, we will be doing that. Number one, because I don't understand how it works, I've never done it, and number two, it just seems like the kind of thing that you would just mess up, oh, I would mess up horribly, but I'll talk about it. Oh, you know what I should show you? There, there are probably there are different enemies in the woods here, um, and we're gonna try to hit a snow lion because they're cool on their own as kind of these huge, way out of proportion. Oh, there we go. The jeez, unprecedented streak of luck on that right there, and we back attacked him, and he's surrounded by the most worthless enemies ever. Okay, these guys are crazy big and like hard to kill, but. We just mugged eight healing meals from them, and each of those is worth 20 Kiraga. Which obviously is the highest of the Kira spells, so... Okay, and I actually have blizzards, or uh, cold spells, attached to Renoa and Switch, so that battle took a really, really long time. So I'm not going to show any of it. But you can also, um, draw Blizzaga out of those guys. And they give good experience, I mean... And 10 AP, which is a great amount of AP. We're gonna... We can grind for AP later if we have to. Like I said, Cactor Island makes that all possible. So yeah, so now... um, Well, first I'm gonna take the Blizzard spells off of my main characters, because that was dumb. I don't know why. Running around in the snow, I don't know why that occurred to me. That might be a good idea. And I don't know what I junctioned on Renoa. Probably water. No, Blizzard. Yeah, just Blizzard. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we're running around in the snow. Why don't you guys junction the one thing that won't hurt anything? Okay, and there are healing males. 20 Kiragas. Also, those unicorn-looking monsters. Uh, if you get at one of those that's a high enough level, you can draw a Kiraga from them. So... Again, that's something I'll be doing off-screen. Filling up on Kiraga, regen... 
probably not filling up on Meltdown, but getting a bunch of it. And I think that might be it. And I'll see how many life rings I can get. Because you can get them from the unicorn monsters too, if I didn't explain that. They don't tend to... I don't think you can mug them. I think you have to get them after they die. Like they show up as loot. I don't know. I can't guarantee you that. But that's do that is where they come from. I gotta figure out where regen rings come from too. Because I have one, and they refine into full life, which is one of the best... Number one, it's a great spell in boss battles, because you resurrect somebody with full life. But also, they, they junction to, to hit points, and, and generally knock you up to 999, or 9,999 hit points. So they're good. They're a good hit point junction spell. And then they free up other things to be junctioned into other kind of spaces. So you're not junctioning crazy things like Ultima um, to your hit points. Because Ultima and Full Life and Life Shell and Protect and Reflect, all the spells like that, you're going to want to go into your elemental and status defenses to make you impervious to those things. We're going to go over that as well. I know. You're just like, all this stuff, but we... We, we grind through the plotline pretty fast, so we've got to go over some of these these strategy kind of things. Okay, so Central Ruins are on this kind of cluster of islands that look like they've been hit in the middle by a meteor or whatever the implication of them is. It's this, like, it's this diamond-looking empty frame just standing out in the middle of nowhere. So when we find it, we'll be, uh... We'll be jumping out of the the guard. There it is. I mean, yeah. See, diamond-looking empty frame. Real goofy-looking building. So the thing in here is, it's not a GF, really. It's not a junctionable GF. It's um, I am Odin. And then that sign says "My Blue Heaven," which I don't know. I just like the sound of it. So we have 20 minutes. This is kind of a puzzle building. Well, it's completely a puzzle building. We have 20 minutes to solve the puzzle, get to Odin, and beat him. He doesn't fight back. So we don't have to worry about... First off, you need your encounter none ability on here, so you get no random encounters. Because 20 minutes. It's a pretty short time, time frame. You just don't want to be fighting enemies. It shouldn't be a problem. At the level that you can get to this actual building, you should be able to do this really easily. <coughs> and what Odin does is about, the best estimates I've, I've heard are about one out of every ten battles, he just shows up before anybody has a chance to fight and cuts all the enemies in half and, insta and instantly kills them. So, at some point we'll probably show that, at some point I'll randomly capture him doing that and we'll show it. So, and he can do that in any non-boss battle, apparently. Just, again, just randomly. So we've got to come up the left stairs here, because the right stairs, or ladder, the left ladder. Because the right ladder just leads to a, a draw point. And then we'll turn on this thing. This ancient machinery, because in Final Fantasy there's always some ancient piece of machinery that's been sitting around for thousands of years and just waiting for you to turn it on. So they can do magical things. Which is exactly what archaeology is like, is every day you're just encountering these gigantic amazing machines that you touch and then they do crazy stuff and they chase you down halls with boulders and things. No, that's not. I always said archaeology is exactly like Indiana Jones, except without all the Nazis and beautiful women and danger and whips and treasure. It's exactly like that. It's actually, it's a lot of broken, it's a lot of broken pottery and, uh, um, Projectile points, which are commonly called arrowheads, but that's not really fair because, in, especially in America, like ma the majority of them were spear points. There, there weren't like a actual arrow points until, but pretty late actually in kind of the history of the archaeology of the country. However, if you do archaeology out in Utah and Wyoming, it's a lot of measuring like old tin cans and stuff. It's a lot of these Depression era camp sites. And in Texas, at one point, I was doing a lot of Dust Bowl era farm steads and stuff, which was kind of cool. So anyway, so this statue has a left eye and does not have a right eye, so take the left eye out. 
it'll ask you what to do with both eyes. It says it has a left eye. Do you want to take it? And you say like, yeah. And then it says, it doesn't have a right eye. What do you want to do? And you say, help um, I myself don't have, a, well, I have a left eye, but it doesn't work right. It works. You probably couldn't pull it out and put it in a statue or something. I'm assuming it's it's stuck in there. It looks just like my right eye. You'd never know by looking at me. But I am legally blind in my left eye. Okay, so this statue doesn't have a left eye, so put the left eye in. And then it asks you if you want to take out the right eye, but say no. And then it gives you a code. 02335. We're going to need to know that code. Actually, in just a little while, we're going to need to know that code. And we got a little time, we can hit this draw point. Pain is going to be uh, an important spell for status junctioning. Because it's a great status attack spell. It does, like, three different statuses at once. Like, it hits you with, like, bio and darkness and probably silence at the same time. And I just realized we completely forgot that we need to take the eyes out of that other statue. Now we got to take the eyes out of the statue on top and put them in the eyes of the first statue. So that we can actually enter the code at 02335, which I'm trying desperately to remember. Sorry, that was an unfortunate perspective switch that made me go back down. We don't want to go back down, we want to go up to the statue and steal its eyes. Which seems a little grotesque to me, to be like, pulling eyes out of statues, but whatever. So how's everybody doing? I didn't ask that. We're fine, vertical sandwich! I haven't asked that in a while. Um... So it'll ask for both eyes, and we take them both out. And did I say we'll be coming back here? There's there, there are a few GFs that you don't have to get in this game. Actually, I think almost... I think there's only one more that you draw out of a person. Maybe there's two. And, uh... But there are some, like the Jumbo Cactor. The... Um, King Tonberry. Bahamut. Let's see. I'm, I'm. I know I'm missing one kind of prompt that we're actually gonna have to go seek out. B dubs. So we'll put both eyes in the statue, and it'll give us a chance to enter our code zero two three three five. <sighs> see, and this is pretty high tech stuff here. This projecting numbers onto smoke, like they must have some sort of like laser show projection technology. It's pretty impressive, at least in my opinion. I mean, I'm assuming they're projecting it onto the smoke. I don't know where else it could be. And this, yeah, code accepted, and it opens the door, and this is it, actually. Now we have 14 minutes to beat this thing up, and it's not going to attack us back, so. So pretty much you can do this as soon as you have kind of the encounter none ability, and can get to this building. You could probably do it doing random encounters if you knew exactly what you needed to do and could do it really quick, but then you have to be strong enough to like, Oh, the weak shall perish, the strong shall triumph. Prevail over my sword and I shall grant it to thee. For honor, let us fight. But, uh, you know, you have to be strong enough to dispatch enemies quickly to do this puzzle like that. So encounter none just helps out a lot. I don't know how many hit points this guy has. Um, I don't know what kind of damage we're going to do to him, but I can't imagine this is going to gonna be a, a huge problem. I mean, it may take us some time, but it's not gonna... Well, we're not doing over a thousand, which is a little unfortunate, I guess, so... And Selfie's not mugging right now because you ha I have to change out mug to, uh... to change it to encounter none. So. Just so you know why she's not trying to steal things from Odin. And there may be something you can mug from Odin. So it may be smart to turn Mug back on before you go into the, the room he's in. Because I don't think you'll hit any random encounters in the room. Either. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to cast Aura on our main character. Just to show kind of the power of that spell. And obviously it's... Aura allows you to use your limit break even when you don't have low hit points. Which you're always going to want to use on your main character because he has a ridiculous limit break. And this is going to become really important later in the game. Rezokin, or whatever you call Switch's limit break. Like, we'll hit an enemy. Like, you look at this. Like, it hits an enemy somewhere between five and seven times. 
or five and eight times. Which, if you can get, if you can get your main character to to max out the damage he does to enemies, like at nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine, he can do eighty thousand points of damage in one limit break. Which is going to become really important when you're doing things like fighting the Jumbo Cactor, or fighting Bahamut, or fighting, you know, whatever. So. I mean, it's just going to be, like, like I said, this is just going to be an incredibly important spell to be able to use. And at some point, that will be the focus of kind of what you're doing with bosses is, well, see that, like, t two hits from that, and then a couple random attacks from our other people, and he died. And we get the Odin card, so. And 20 AP, which is good. Yeah. Thou art strong, mortals, I shall grant thee my powers. Call upon me in times of trouble. And like I said, he's, he randomly shows up. But he's something that we kind of had to do, so... And now his chamber's empty, and we can run around, there's no more time limit, we can get all the draw points we avoided. So that's it, so we got some stuff accomplished, like I explained. Again, after this video, I'm going back to Trivia Garden, I'm gonna grind for Kiraga... Probably Meltdown. Regen. And, uh... Eh, probably not Blizzaga, I'm not real keen on that kind of elemental-specific kind of high power spells. And then we'll be coming back to go to Adia's house, which was the next place we have to go in the plot line. And then a whole bunch of stuff is going to happen. I actually think going to Adia's house will be the last actual thing we do before the end of disc three, or disc two. So after the next couple videos, we'll be in disc three. So yeah, um, this is where we'll be grinding for Tonberries to get the giant, the King Tonberry GF, but that will be way later. So don't worry about it. So we'll hit this draw point, we'll be heading on out, and that'll be the end of the video, people. So, alright, so Adia's house next time, thanks for watching, I appreciate it. You guys, uh, you take care, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye everybody.